Alrighty, this is devlog number 11, and this one has primarily been focused on optics as well as a little bit of a test with the pistol, but I realized I have to go through and I'm going to end up rewriting how ammunition is handled, how, you know, animations like the montage and all that kind of stuff are played. I want to really kind of simplify the system, uh, and currently as well, I have set up a Remington 700 went ahead and modeled that up and brought it in and that led me to realize that it will not currently work with firearms that have an integral box magazine or that are just actually I think it would work if I loaded it up I think that they would work if they were single loaded or single shot but anyways uh, magazines like sorry firearms that have a internal box magazine they're just not going to work so I'm going to have to rewrite it to support that and while I'm on that topic I'm going to end up trying to set it up so you can for example in this case with the Remington 700 you can single load them by hand or if you take over and look at an SKS where you can use stripper clips or reload them by hand that way so I gotta kind of come up with some kind of robust system to handle that or just say screw it and leave that up to whoever wants to actually go through and implement it for themselves anyhow uh, back to the features so a good bit of stuff has actually been done in terms of one customization of the optics and two just some features that you don't really see much in terms of video games except for games like escape from tarkov so to begin we now have for magnified optics a proper eye box so as you can see here i get behind the optic we have some shadow i've moved forward i get closer we also get some shadow uh, you could ignore that hue around it i forgot to turn back down one of the uh settings so if i head back over that's using this one here you can see all the settings that are inherited from the master material i accidentally left the outer ring blur way up so as you can see now it's back to being clear but as you can see as i move around we get some shadow that tracks it around and same thing i go back and i go too close we get that same shadow now this is going to be customized for pretty much any optic to suit it. So for example, we have this set up here. Here I have the shadow radius. So if I drop that down, as you can see, it gets in and kind of fades it in. It makes it a lot harder to see. We have the eye box range. So if I, for example, I go back, as you can see, we are getting out of the range of the eye box. I can just drop that, which I need to uh, kind of invert this setting. But as you can see, we can now go farther back before it starts to really screw with us. And same thing, we have the amount that the shadow shrinks by. So if I get, again, like right in here, I can lower that. And it doesn't shrink as much, but it does shrink faster. So you want to kind of find a balance here. So Here's the default, and as you can see, it's just barely any around the optic or around the glass. I lower that to like 1.55, and that's just barely edging it out. I do 1.5, and it's pretty, it's pretty much not going to be seen unless you get off center or too far away or too close. And the main reason I wanted to set this up was because of my uh, stock system and being able to move sights around. So here, as you can see, I have the Remington 700. Let me go ahead and just add the parts. So I'll use the rail at the scope. So here, as you can see, here's the default view. I'm currently at one power, but if I drag the scope forwards, as you can see, we now get some shadow because we are too far away. We're getting out of that eye box. If I drag it back all the way to the rear, we're still in it. If I drag the scope all the way to the back, as you can see, we are now getting too close to where we're starting to see that shadow, and it's getting heavily affected by the sway. So we want to kind of put that somewhere where it makes some sense. So I just leave it right in the middle there, and we're pretty much good to go. So the other major feature here is I now added support for first focal plane and second focal plane optics. So if you don't know what that is, um, for example, actually, I'll, this is what you probably... Actually, those of you that are not very familiar, this is what you're probably more so used to seeing. Uh, let me switch this out real quick. 
I'm having a hard time remembering where everything actually is. I just went through and reorganized it all. All right, so here's the mount. So I have the first focal plane set up, and for the second one, I'll add the second focal plane. Right. So let me just go ahead and set that back up. So let's look at the second focal plane. That's what you're probably more used to seeing. May as well put the rest of the parts back on. So as I look through it, and if I zoom in, as you can see, the reticle itself, it doesn't change. It stays the same size. So this is usually found on cheaper optics, and it has its purpose not in like, for example, low power variable optics like 1 to 6s, 1 to 8s. They don't really have much of a use for this, so it's kind of a waste. But as you get out into more higher powered optics, like, you know, ones that range from 6.5 to 20 and greater, you really want a first focal plane optic. And the reason for that is due to, well, your reticle is not changing, so your holdovers are not going to be correct. So that's why on second focal planes, you're usually at your magic, yeah, magnification. I can't speak, magnification dial, as you turn it, you will see that it usually has a line, and that line's usually at the point where your markings on the optic are correct. So in this case, it would be all the mill dots. So that's where that would be correct. Now in first focal plane, again, usually more expensive, as you can see right here, if we look through it, as I zoom in, as you can see, my reticle also scales with it. So that allows it so, let's say I'm right here, my reticle's small, I zoom in, it gets bigger, I zoom in it more, it gets bigger. That allows it for the holdovers, so all your markings, to be correct at different magnifications. So that's mostly what that's for. Now, I've done, as you probably saw with uh, the rest of the stuff that came up, let me actually, I can be, I'm going to save some time real quick and fill out the gun so I don't have to keep doing it every time. All right, I went ahead and added the parts so now I can spawn decently. And I forgot to do the stock, didn't I? Go figure. I thought I selected it. Oh, I did the wrong stock. That makes a lot more sense. There we go. All right, so if we look back here at the magnific or the uh, materials for the reticles, or for the scope glass, we have some more options here that are specific to the reticle. So obviously you can do things like scaling up the size and all that fun stuff. Let me go ahead and set this up so we can easily see it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to zoom right there. Now I go over to this. It's due to the render target system. It's This is one way you can actually go through and see it. And of course the hands in the way. So i got to slide it forwards a bit. Sorry about that. Max it all the way out. So the hand's completely out of the way. There we go. So now we're seeing what we previously saw. So you can see here, we have a couple of different portions. So we have the dots and the lines. Well, let's start from the bottom. We have the reticle size. Literally, as that says, that controls the reticle size. And am I on the wrong? I am on the wrong material. I need to go to this one. That explains why I wasn't changing. Alright, so starting with the reticle size, we're at 0 0.5. If I bump this up to 1, obviously you can see it changes the reticle size. So you can change it and scale it all that way. So I'll just leave it at 1 for the time being. And starting from the bottom, we'll work our way up. Obviously we have the reticle, so that's which one we want to use. So if I want to use the EOTech reticle that I've imported, the mill dot, or the mill dot cross section that I've set up, you can do so. Now, here's the thing about what I've been doing with my system. I'm going to make this customizable inside of the engine, as well as make it so you can honestly change this on the fly. So here we have, let me turn these back on, starting from the blue channel color. Or sorry, we'll start from the bottom, we'll do the red. So currently I have the red and blue set to black, and that's because I each have these dots and lines controlled by different colors. So if I take this red channel, and I'll go ahead and move it over to red. As you can see, that channel has been linked to the lines themselves. And then the blue channel I have linked to the dots. So I'll make those blue. Or I can go over and make those red as well. Yellow, green, whatever I want. So it works all that way. And then on top of that, we have the ability to control each of those emissiveness. 
So for the blue, all the dots, for example, I'll drag that on up. We can make it super bright, or if you really wanted to, completely blinding. Or we can leave it at one, which is no emissive at all. It's just flat. So if I wanted to, I can, you know, that's for like your uh, hollow sites and all that kind of stuff. Give them some glow to it. So I leave these at one and I set them as black because I have this reticle set to where I just want to be able to see the, well, the point where I'm going to be aiming. So I can change that to green, blue, pink, purple, whatever I want. I'm going to leave it by default at red. So that's how that all works. And then I've already went over the basic eye box stuff. Uh, the outer ring blur, as you saw at the beginning there, it controls how, kind of how blurry slash out of focus the outside gets. I want to improve on this because I'm not super happy with how it looks, but I'm extremely new to all this material stuff. Now, moving on to the other reticles here. So this is for your non-magnified optics. This is for like your red dots, your hollow sights, and all that kind of stuff. So as you can see, it's a little bit simpler. So we obviously have, again, the reticle. So I'll change that to the EOTech that I went ahead and mapped out. I made these all in GIMP, so I'll actually bring up the project so you, I can show you what all uh, has been done to control it. So as you can see, again, we have those same exact features here. So the red channel, I can change that to green. And as you can see, it changes over to green. I can go to blue, purple, just really whatever I want. So I'll leave that at red. And I'll go ahead and crank up the emissive to like 500. And same thing goes. We have the green, which is the inner dots. Change those to white. You know, whatever you want. Really, it's up to you. You can make your own unique setup this way. And again, bump that up to 500. Or it'd be real fun to just make it blinding. Yeah. So I'm going to leave those back about how I had them. I don't remember what they were at. And that's what handles that. Uh, I do want to add a setup for, I, I already have it built into the master material, I just haven't exposed it as a parameter, I don't, I just realized I forgot to do that, but to change the uh, reticle size, so if you import it and it's off, you can change it that way, so that'll be done by the time this is submitted for a release anyways, and let me just change it back to the triangle, and I will cover how each of these are controlled, so I'll go ahead and actually change this one to green, so we can see the difference. So here in GIMP, let's look at that triangle real quick. So as you can see, we have a blank background, but we have three colors. So that corresponds to, obviously, red, green, and blue. And in the material here, we are able to alter those three colors. So basically, it figures out which one is which and allows you to change them inside of the material. So obviously, I want the red. That's going to be the red channel. So that's going to be our dot. So if we look at the red channel, which again was our dot, that's the one we alter, like so. Then we obviously, again, we have the green channel. That's going to be this bottom right leg. So let's grab the green channel. Let's make that green. As you can see, it comes over here and changes. I'll move the red channel back to red. Then, of course, we have the blue channel. So, again, that's obviously blue. I don't know how else to put it. It's blue. <laughs> and then, again, you have all your emissiveness and all that fun stuff. That you can change and tinker with or you can just make it flat like so which in my opinion for a dot like this that does not look very good it kind of like having a little bit of glow to it I'll put that back to like 150 and that's a little high 100 then just 50 and 50 and there's my new reticle so that's how this system goes through and works um yeah that's really all I have. Uh, I did do a test, so I imported this and set up a handgun that I found online. So I'll go ahead and show you that real quick. Right there. I don't think I have it playing the right animations. No, I do not. I went ahead and did a setup in the animation blueprint to iterate through. But I need to uh, do some changes to it. Anyways. So as you can see, we have our Glock. The sway and all that fun stuff works all the same like normal. We also have customization. So I can attach, I'm using the wrong images. I didn't make thumbnails for these. So I can't drag that around at all. I can go through and attach the flashlight. I can go through and attach the red dot. I can slide the red dot around. 
and obviously I can aim to it just fine. So I have it all the way to the rear, I can move it all the way to the front. Moves a little bit farther, and all that fun stuff. Can't move that, and yeah. That's really kind of how this system works. It picks everything up automatically, that handles it for you, all the same. Because I am not going through and doing anything in regards to work on the customization. The only thing I'd have to do to add a new part is, for example, I'll show you with the Remington 700. Uh, let me go to a specific part for that. Uh, like the, I'll do the stock. So I import the mesh. I have a thumbnail that I created in Marmoset. Again, I have all my textures. I just made it into a material instance for it. Uh, I can ignore the color ID. Then I'll go over here. And for the stock, I'll just go ahead and I'll organize all the classes as well, finally. I'll just grab the part base because there's no stock class because it's not really needed. I'll grab part base. I'll go ahead and create the part, which is right here. Inside of that, I'll go through and set the mesh to be the part. And then I'll go ahead and set the default. So the part class by default fills itself out. And then the part image, I go ahead and set that to the thumbnail. And then the part type, you generally want to set to stock if it's adjustable. If not, don't really worry about it. You can just leave it to a other, so it doesn't really matter. And then that's it. We now have that part. So once you do that, if you wanted to, what would happen is you end up with this result here for the stock. So that automatically gets filled out. Sorry, not automatically. Once you have the part made, I forgot one step, you have to then open up your actual firearm Add a new component, like I've showed a couple times in the past. So we just add that new FPS part. We go through, and it's a good idea to set the preview mesh so you can see it visually if you need to any, do any adjustments to place it manually. But I have a dedicated bone for this, so it's placed where I want it, as you can see right here. And then you go up here to pos uh, possible parts, and you just add one, and you would select that stock class that you just made, and it'll go through and set it that way. And that allows you to have a variety of different things that you can do. So, for example, I have a bunch more optics. So I can add my little red dot on top of the gun. I can add the ACOG to the top of the gun. I don't think I made this. No, yeah, I do have this one as variable. This one's obviously, as you can tell, second pogo plane. And you can go from there, and each attachment brings on more attachments based upon how you have the base of it set up. So now I have a red dot on top, and I can switch between the two. You take the red dot off. You have just the ACOG. And you can swap that out with the rail. I'll go to the first focal plane. As you can see, it zooms in. I need to scale the uh, reticle back down. And I can switch back to the second focal plane to where it doesn't scale and all that fun stuff. So that's how that all works. Uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much everything. It's been a lot of like fine tuning and customization things to the optics to make them presentable and look decent. But yeah, it is now 3 a.m. and I got to go to the beach. So I will see y'all later.